Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Sphere Map node. So we're going to jump into Fusion. And I've just got a little setup with a shape. And I'm going to bring in a Sphere Map node. So we're going to hit Shift Space and type S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. Look for the Sphere Map node. Now, in order to use this sphere map node, we also need the reflect node, which I am not going to cover today, but we're going to have to bring it in because this only works with the reflect node. So we're going to type reflect, shift space, reflect, and bring in a reflect node. And like I said, we'll go over this uh, tomorrow because it's a fairly in-depth node and uh, I'm trying to make these quick. So what the sphere map node is used for, it simulates like environment mapping for reflection or reflection mapping. And basically it generates a 360 degree map as a reflection onto your shape. And uh, your shape needs to be a sphere. You can use another shape, but it's not gonna look right. So let's go ahead and connect these up so you can see what I'm talking about. And to make this easier and to give you another little tip, when we're connecting to nodes that have a lot of inputs, instead of trying to find the exact input, like this one has four white inputs, which are all different inputs. If we hold our Alt key and select our output of the node we want to input and hold it over and let go, you can see we get this little uh, selection that pops up and we can select what input we want to input that uh, node into. So we're going to select reflection color material. So now we know where to input that in. So that's an easy way to connect up nodes with a lot of inputs. So again, all we have to do is hold the alt key, select our output, still holding our alt key, let go of the mouse button. And uh, you can see we've got a uh, multiple inputs, all the inputs we can input it in and reflection color material. And once we do that, we're going to go from our reflection into our material input of our shape. And everything turned red because we don't have an image. So our sphere map requires an input and it requires an image input. And that input needs to be what's called an equa rectangular format image. And this pretty much just means an HDRI or 360 footage. So any footage that has a 360 degree image that's flattened out in the lat long format is what this is looking for. Now you can bring any type of footage in that you want, but if we were to uh, bring in some flat footage, which we've got this footage right here, if we brought flat footage into our map look at our render and I'm going to go here and select constant so we can see what's going on. You can see our image is weird in a reflection and it's not quite a mapping correctly because it's a flat image. But if I was to input say an HDRI in a, maybe an EXR format, can't quite see it, but the image is mapped out correctly. Now, since this is an HDRI and there's multiple levels of uh, information in there, we can actually bring in a color corrector. And in our color corrector, we can use the gamma and the gain to lift that information out of there because it's a pretty dark HDRI. It's a nighttime shot but we can use our gamma to start bringing that information out. And we can also use our gain to bring up some of that color information. So now we've got an HDRI reflecting. And again, if we brought in another HDRI, we can test that one out. And there we go. We've got a forest HDRI showing up. So on our sphere map node itself, we've got an option up here for angular mapping. And this will make our, uh, our poles 
a little less squashed. So if I select this, it's going to be a little less squished. But if you notice, we just got these black dots and that's always going to show up in a normal 360 image if we use this angular mapping. So if you don't mind those and you want that look instead, you can use this, but those black dots are always going to be there. So let's uncheck that. Under our texture depth, we can use the source. So whatever source input we put, or we can select individual uh, texture depths. On our rotation, we can rotate our uh, HDRI or our 360 footage that we brought in on the X, the Y, and the Z. And under our texture filtering mode, we've got all the typical uh, filtering modes for our low and high Q that we go over all the time in all of our uh, other nodes with nearest, bilinear, trilinear, and anastrophic. And these pretty much are from the least intensive to the most intensive on your uh, computer. So you can select which one you like the best for either your low Q or your high Q. And if you're running software, you've got the option for uh, nearest or bilinear and for your high, the nearest or bilinear. And this basically means if we're GPU rendering, so in our render engine, if we're rendering with our hardware renderer, we will select either of these two to determine how we want that filtering mode to be done. And if we're running software render, we will use these two selections to select either nearest or bilinear for the low or nearest or bilinear for the high. And then down here, we have the option for material ID to change that material ID. And that is it for your actual controls within the uh, sphere map node. Now, mind you, you can use other footage. So if I brought in say, 360 degree footage from like an Insta360 or a 360 camera, you can input that. So now we've got actual footage in there reflecting. And again, we can go to our little sphere map and we can rotate it to get the look we want. Now, I know some people may think, oh, this is a great way to do an HDRI, but I'm going to let you know it doesn't work that way. So let's go to our shape. And right now, let's make sure everything's zeroed out like right on our camera. And now you notice it's on top of our camera, so it's upside down. But if I make our uh, sphere, let's say, let's say it's 400. Our radius is 400. So if we go to our... Uh, Our little 3D display here, you can see our cameras inside. So you would think it would act like an HDRI, but it doesn't quite work that way. So first of all, it's upside down because now we're looking at the inside of the sphere. So our image is reflecting upside down. So first you would have to go to your sphere and uh, switch your footage on the Z axis to 180 degrees. And now it's flipped up correctly. And you can come in here if you want and pan around your uh, 360 footage, if that's what you're trying to do. But you're not gonna make this any larger. So for example, if we go to our shape and I make this radius 40,000 instead of 400, so 40,000, it looks exactly the same. So that reflection isn't going to change depending on how large you make your shape. So just know that it's not going to operate like an HDRI like you would think it would. But if you need to do this and uh, make keyframes for your footage, you can keyframe your Y. Go to the end. You can change it. So now you've got kind of a motion going on your 360 footage while you're inside that sphere.
So that is the sphere map node. Tomorrow we will go over the reflect node where uh, the power of this sphere map really comes into play. And I will see you in the next node breakdown, which will be the reflect node.